So starting back on step nine here, um, we're going to want to make sure we reattach the process if you're relaunching like I am. Um, so with this one, we're going to do it a little different than we did in the 32-bit tutorial. Um, instead of just an infinite health, what we're going to do, well, an infinite health and a one-hit kill on the other team, um, we're going to set it up much the same way, except this time we're going to actually figure out where the value is being changed. And then this way we can add in a damage multiplier um, to hopefully maybe even get us past this stage. But then we're also going to add a flag and set it up so based on the flag we'll either use the damage multiplier or do a, an infinite health and one hit kills. Um, and then this way we can guarantee we'll be able to pass this. And then of course in a real game setup that might be an option that um, I know I often like to do that so that way I can use a damage multiplier and still have a little bit of that you know, give and take of the game, but then at the same time, at points when I'm just getting irritated or just don't, you know, just feel like screwing off or whatever, I can, you know, you can kick it back up to infinite health and one it kills and just kind of run through stuff real quick and easy. Um, so to do that, we're going to want to start off with finding one of our values here. If we know, based on the 32-bit, that it's basically going to be fairly the same. Um, oh. Uh, we know that's going to be a float based on the 32-bit tutorial, so let's go ahead and change that. And again, sometimes there, that's what you actually do in games, is just use knowledge and what you learn in other stuff. So if you know in a previous version of a game, it might be similar in the next version. Um, or, uh, you know, if you're doing first-person shooters and they're all coming from the same developers using the same engine, again, you can know it's probably going to have similarities between it and us use those similarities to find your stuff a little quicker and easier and get it set up. Um, so let's go ahead and start with seeing what access is this Dave's health. So we got there so we know we're getting written to here and being read from here and um, just based on how far apart these addresses are i um, thinking it's going to be all the same function. And then we can actually, yeah, we can see right here we've already got, we've got a move SS and then a sub SS and it looks like our um, decrease value is coming from ESI and it's just being converted to a float because um, that's what this is, convert scholarly integer to scholarly single. Um, so it does look like, okay, yeah, it's it there so edx and ecx are our parameters for the function or rcx and edx um, but we're going to inject down here well we're going to want to inject in this area it looks like we don't actually want to inject right here because we did that then we'd have to deal with this line and and properly deal with this address and 30 or 64 bit that's a little more to it um, there is a way around that there's a reassemble um, auto assembler command and then um, for that we could actually just feed it this address right here and it will properly reassemble this um, instruction but we're not gonna sometimes it's better just to go and get used to moving around and paying attention for stuff like that so if we go ahead and inject up here we can still manipulate this XMM1 or XMM0 and change its value before it gets subbed anyway and then we'll be able to write to this and do what we want to do <coughs> so let's go ahead and start with that with um, open an auto assembler again we can just go with an AOB injection let's go with inject step 09 text editor up here um, so here I'm gonna go and start with setting it up the way I like it and again it's not really necessary especially moving this I think actually it might be down here because on a maybe a much older release of cheat engine it was required to be down here cause if you think about it um, like in this case it doesn't even really know where the symbol is to register it properly but at the same time it seems like and I don't know, this may have always been this way that it would have worked either way, but Cheat Engine will actually run through all this script and read everything, figure out what it needs to do, and then do it. 
Um, it doesn't necessarily do it all in the exact same order that we put it in. Um, I mean, the only difference is going to be when you're actually talking about the, the memory it assembles, because it will know, okay, wherever this address ends up being, this is what I want to assemble, and, and kind of the same thing up here. It, it just, but it will take bits and pieces and kind of figure out what it needs to do and then do it, it seems. Um, I guess to get more detail on that, you'd have to talk to Dart have to talk to dark bike but um, we're just gonna go and start off with setting this up. Zero X4. So, so we're gonna want to make some um, addresses really just labels and uh, register those so that way we can have access to our multiplier and then we're gonna want to flag and then again here, just for debugging purposes, we'll go ahead and give it a, um, a pointer as well. So that way we can view what's going through this. Um, just so I'm not mixing and matching stuff like that. Let's fix that. Okay. Um, so again, let's go ahead and get set up. Our labels, however you want them. New code, O code. And place our new code label. And make sure we're jumping to our new code properly. Um, so from here, let's go ahead and start making our, our labels that we're gonna use. Uh, for our variables, so to speak. Um, so let's start with our pointer. Our step 09. And register. And symbol. Oh, no, whatever that word. Okay. Um, and let's go ahead and copy that. change this for a float. So let's just go FLT step 9. Yeah, okay. Um, and then this one we're going to want to do, we set it up as a flag. So FLG is what I'll be going with. Uh, again, you can use whatever naming conventions work for you. Um, let's go and copy all this, throw it down here. Take out that, and then unregister all of these. Um, so there we've got all those set. Let's go ahead and put them in place now, and give them our defaults and all that. Um, so first we want our pointer, and then because this is 64-bit, um, we're going to want a data quad. Just zero that, and then we're going to want three of these, basically one for team one, another for team two, and then we'll go ahead and actually do this one right this time. Set up one for everything else, just in case, like the idea being um, we want to be able to keep an eye on this function and see when we ever do get a team three that we make sure that it is, you know, that the team parameter is or the team um, variable is working out right. Um, that or see if we're getting objects running through there or whatever else that's just not falling within our our check um, we may not ever do anything with it but again i just sometimes like to do that I'm just illustrating you know some of the options you do have available to you let's go ahead and align align um, since we're still in our variables we really don't need to space it out with c so we can just go ahead and stick with zeros let's go ahead and set our flag now or our float Sorry, yeah, set our float. Um, this one, because it's a single float, really we can just go double word or double data or data double. Um, but we want to specify that it is in fact a float. So let's go ahead and say we want our, um, with the way this one is, to see if we can actually get it to work with just a multiplier since um, team one's health starts with 100 and their health starts with 500. 
we're already you know a factor of five times for the difference between our hells so even if they are decreasing by the same amount um, it will you know these guys will last longer than than team one will um, so let's go ahead and change that and actually get that so we'll give it a multiplier for team one a damage multiplier of um, 0 0.1 and so we can essentially make it a tenth of what it is. And then let's go ahead and make our multiplier for team two. Except this one, we're going to go ahead and just say um, I don't know five. Um, and this way, it'll be five times the damage that it would have received. Um, to make our infinite health work out right, let's go ahead and do another float. And then this one, we're going to want to make it our health max again. If we had seen that in that data structure. Um, we could mess with that a little bit. Oh, that's another thing we still got to do is look up our data structure. Um, but we're not going to worry about that too much at this point. We can just hard code our infinite health for this, you know, for this game at least. So the line again. Keep it at 10. And one of the benefits of doing this align is so like if we were saying doing a teleport cheat or something like that and this float was actually storing coordinates or something like that, um, we could actually use the um, some of the commands you might have seen before where it's uh, say like move APS or move UPS um, and what that is is like this is move unaligned pack scholar and then APS is move, move aligned pack scholar. Um, and the aligned one, actually having it aligned at a, an address of, you know, that's hex 10 or ends in x 10, that is absolutely required. If we're not aligned, then we'd have to use that um, move unaligned pack scholar. We won't actually be using that here, but I just, again, I like to space stuff out and make it look kind of the way I like it. So we're, now let's set our flag up. So data byte. Um, We'll go ahead and make, I always like to have an actual disabled state when I have a flag in there, so this way I can even just let the addresses run through and pick up addresses before I start enabling stuff. Um, and so we can do that. So we'll say zero is disabled. Let's go ahead and say one is infinite health, and we'll go ahead and start it off with a default to zero two, which will make our damage multiplier. So let's go ahead and set up two flags, so one for team two and one for team one. And here's where we'll want to go in a line again, but this time we're going to want to do that 10 cc. So this way it actually pads it out and makes it more readable if we go to view this memory or do some debugging or anything like that. Um, not necessarily a big deal. I do actually like to pad things out, um, step it over enough so this way I can clearly see we're in new mem and all this is supposed to fall under new mem and then when we get here we're actually now assembling at our injection point and this that's what this falls under. Um, not something you have to do, it's just whatever looks better to you really is what's kind of important here. Um, so let's go ahead and make a couple more labels here. So we'll call this um, Team 1 code. Call that team two code. Come on back down here. We'll do team one code. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to check our team flag and then jump to team one code. So we'll want to make sure that we actually jump back to our O code. Um, so let's go ahead and put that in there just to make sure we don't forget that at any point. Um, again, I like to actually space these out a little bit so that way I can kind of tell that I really do absolutely want to have that proper jump. These are all separated, you know, they're not really going to be functions in this case, but just areas of code that we're going to be jumping to. So let's go ahead and make sure we get that team two. So this is where we can go ahead and start a little bit of writing without knowing some of the stuff we need. Um, we can set our pointer, um, RBX, and we can do the same thing with team 2 just make sure now it's um 64 bit so we'll want to do an offset of 8 so basically like this one 0 that's team 1 and then an offset of 8 would be team 2 and then an offset of 1 0 would be team 3 or 
you know, unknown or other, or whatever we're going to end up calling that. Oh, yeah, doing that wrong. Plus eight for team two. And then when we get our checks all done, we'll end up wanting one down here for team, um, or, well, not really a team, but unknown, more or less. Um, so before we go too far on this, let's actually go ahead and look at our structure a little bit here and see what we can find on it. Um, so let's find out what address is this instruction access. Go ahead and attack with everybody. Again, select all of them. And we want to open data, or just open dissect data structure. It's actually name this this time, excuse me. So here, and again, we can even always do some exploring, um, see if we can't find that that health value, that positive health. It looks like each one of these objects points at the next object. Um, well, that one kind of goes backwards. Not sure what that's all about. We're not really too super worried about that. Um, obviously, we don't necessarily need to look too much into that structure because it just it repeats. Um, I'm not really seeing anything that looks like even a, a heck. Well, this might. No, that's all I'm saying. Um, and one thing Cheat Engine does do. And so, any when we were looking at this, when we're in the same group, anything that's different. And it's not all of them are the same. Basically, if one of them is different, it'll show up as red. And then if they're all the same, it'll show up as green. And then we can even go as far as um, change group here and put these other two guys in a separate group. And this can help making um, what we're looking at here look a little different. So you can see here where if they're all the same now in both groups, we're blue to the same for one group then it's green and then of course when we're different it's going to be red um, so not really seeing a whole lot there with the imp or for the uh, health max but <coughs> yeah so that's not a pointer a correct pointer that might even be something there saying there okay um so not really seeing anything for that let's just go ahead and say health and then of course we've got our oh yeah, we need to fix that so this one's showing up a little weird so we'll go ahead and delete it um it's not showing our team variable sometimes you will have to actually inspect a little bit more since we couldn't open that pointer we know but wasn't a pointer so let's look at two four bytes um, there, if you've got one like we've got where it's already just above it, after you delete it, you can select the instruction above what you want to insert and just hit the insert key and it'll populate it with some defaults here. Um, there is also a auto guess gaps. Oh, I hit insert. I don't know why that's coming out. So here we can kind of see we've actually got our difference. And it's, um, since it's the same on this group and the same on this group, but different between the groups, again, we're a, a different color here. I think that looks kind of purplish to me. Um, so that's our, I don't know why that keeps coming up. So that's our team variable or our team ID. And just for clarity, let's go and give our name there. Um, and this actually looks like it's the length of our, or, yeah, the length of our string. Um, I'm not real familiar with that. I don't know if Dark Byte just did this for something in the structure, or if he's actually using something that would do this normally. I know there is like an older setup that does this, but most everything, and um, at least with .NET and even on Linux, it's usually going to be a zero delimited string. But again, that all depends upon how the compiler sets stuff up. Um, but basically, zero delimited means that the string always has to end with a zero, a zero byte. Otherwise, it won't know. And then, of course, if it's Unicode, it would need to add two. But 
these seem to be just regular strings so you can see there it's actually so these are actually probably delimited strings um, so now we know our team is at offset 1 4 let's go ahead and use that information start writing our our comparisons here so um, since we're going to be doing some comparisons here it didn't really look like so see normally what we want to do is kind of check this kind of thing because if we didn't have another compare right below this we might need to actually have some concern with like this compare above it and make sure that we're gonna save that so in that case like um, if you watch that basics one um, we would actually want to do a push FQ and then say come on down here somewhere um, nah, let's go ahead and we're not gonna actually keep it this way but let's go ahead and set it up this way this is how I normally do it we'll go ahead and get make an exit label and stick that label down here and this way down here, we can know it's not a part of our original code, but we want to put in it, um, or yeah, pop FQ. What is going on? A pop FQ. And then this way we can push our flags registry. And because it's 64 bit, we want to put a 60, you know, push 64 bits of flag on there, because that's how this one works. And then pop FQ to restore it. Um, now since we've got this compare just below it and there isn't uh, anything to skip that um, we don't really need to worry about that because that compare will kind of straighten things back out for us so let's go ahead and just get rid of this and make sure we get rid of our pop otherwise you will get a crash because um, it will throw off the stack so let's go ahead and throw in our compare here so we want to compare that RBX plus one four we want to compare the first one to one, see if we're team one, and then in this case we're instead of jumping over for each of these, we're adding a little bit more here to help make it more clear what's going on and keep things kind of separated out. We're going to go and jump to that team one code. And here we can just go ahead and copy that and just change these two so that way we're checking for two and then jumping to team, you know, team two code if it is two. And then of course if it's not team two or team one, then we'll just store the pointer and go ahead and continue on with the normal code. And this way we can see something isn't being dealt with. Um, so now let's go ahead and come on up here. Here's where we're gonna wanna start checking for our flags. Um, there's a couple different ways to do that. We could actually go ahead and do, um, we'd have to do a push and then a pop. Um, so we wanna do like a push push RAX and then do a move and then here so we could actually move just a byte move AL and then our flag and then make sure we you know do our comparison so it'd be like compare AL to zero um, that's one way of doing it um, you can run into problems with 64 bit doing it the way I'm about to show you um, but it really shouldn't be too big of a deal. That's where you would actually almost have to use, uh, set your flag to a 64-bit registry or the address of that. Um, it can get a little weird, but since we have our allocate near symbol set, it should be close enough that we'll be able to get away with doing it this way. This way it can actually read the, you know, it will store the 64-bit address in some sense as a 32-bit. Um, so compare, oh, so compare, um, and again we gotta specify now because we're not moving it into a byte registry size. We gotta tell what size we're doing, otherwise by default it'll want to do a, a 32 bit. Um, so compare flag. We're going to compare that to one, and then jump if equal to O code. Because like I said before, we'll make zero or no. Yeah, I'm, I'm telling you wrong. So compare byte pointer flag to zero, which is our disable state, and jump if equal to O code, which basically means we're going to be disabled. Um, 
one thing I like to do is if none of the um, states or none of the flags are set right, you know, it's not zero, it's not going to be one and not two, then we want to go ahead and set it to zero. So this way it'll pop up with the word disabled. I'll show you what I mean later when we start placing our flags in the table. Um, but it'll show the word disabled or disabled. Yeah, disabled, sorry. Um, show that and then we can you know, kind of know something's happened, something, we didn't do something right, maybe, uh, maybe we forgot to put in a jump to O code. Um, and so here we're going to want to compare to one, and then in this case we're going to want to say jump if not equal, and go back to using some generic labels here, so jump forward to the next label. Um, this could be any, we could actually make a, a named label here, and this jump forward would still work. Can actually do like a jump back and this would create a loop because it would go back up to this label um, but we want to jump forward to skip this block of code we're fixing to put in so for infinite health um, one thing we're going to want to do is uh, clear out that xmm0 because that seemed like it was our decrease value if we were curious about that um, we could come up here that so we can come up here and go ahead and execute a couple of them and then hit the float button or that F and then so here we can see our decrease value is 4 and then um, XMM1 just isn't set yet it's we're, we're seeing the values before it actually runs this line um, and then yeah like we were Oh yeah, it was our RS or ESI, wasn't it? Yeah, okay, so that's right. So yeah, we can see here that ESI is 4, and then it gets converted to a float, and that's um, XMM1, and then that's what's going to be our decrease value. So we want to either multiply that for our multiplier, and then for the case of our infinite health, we want to make sure we clear that so our health doesn't get decreased. So we want to XOR it to zero it out. And basically XOR is um, comparing the bits and any two bits that are the same on those, you know, the two um, parameters of this, or the two operands. Um, I think I'm saying that word right. Anyway, uh, will zero out if they're set to one. And then any two that are set to zero will also be zero. You know, they just stay zero. So if we do the same two registries with this, um, or the same two inputs, then it will just zero the XMM1 out. So now another thing we want to do is go ahead and hard set our, our health value, so that way if we enable it at a point like this, it will just make that 100. Um, that's what we've got that there for. So let's go XMM1. RBX, so yeah, no. Flow. And then that we're going to need an offset of um, like 0, 4, and 8. So 8. And basically, so this is 0, here's our offset of 4, and then this is offset of 8. Um, then we're going to want to move SS. RBX plus 8. And XMM1. Now here's where we want to make sure we jump and skip so it doesn't get reset there. Um, now we could just go ahead and jump to O code and that would be fine but at the same time as you can see here we'd actually be reading the value back and we don't really need to do that. So in this case we can go ahead and say jump to exit. We don't need to actually run the original code again um, since especially it's just a one line. If it was more than one line here it'd be probably be easier just to jump to O code. Again, if you don't really care for that exit thing, since we don't really need it, you can just jump to O code and that'll be fine as well. It'll, you know, work. Basically, it just have one more instead of running through this and jump line and then just coming straight down here. We just hit here and then run that real quick and keep going. So it's not really a terribly amount of difference there. So here, let's go ahead and check two. 
And this one's going to be our multiplier. So what we're going to want to do is do a mol SS and XMM0 times our float. And we'll want that um, zero offset, so we just don't need to put anything there. Um, and that's really all there is for our multiplier at this point. Um, it's a pretty simple one. And then this one, we do want to run that O code. Because we do need to have XMM1 set, because we're not doing that. Um, so for Team 1, this pretty much has us done. And as we can see here, so we, we hit this code. We um, set our pointer for team one with RBX, which is our base. Um, and then we check our flag with a zero offset, more or less, or not, you know, it's kind of implied more, you know, to some extent, um, with a zero offset to uh, zero. And then, you know, that's our disabled state. So there we just go right back to O code. And then we check it for one. If we're at one, we'll, we'll run this block. If we're not, we're gonna skip it. Um, same thing here, we check for two. If we're not two, then we skip it and we'll reset the flag and then jump to O code. If we are two, then we'll mol SS or multiply this um, XMM zero with 0 0.1 or whatever, whatever the user stores here. We're gonna give access to all this stuff. So this way, you know, if, if you want less of a multiplier, you know, real world scenario here, it's obviously not going to make a huge difference. But, um, and then, like I said here, we're going to zero the decrease value so it doesn't get decreased and then hard set our health to um, 100 or health max. Um, again, we could make that RBX plus, you know, two zero if that's where our um, health was stored or our max health. But since we didn't find that, we'll just go and go hard coded. And we might even be able to dig around in here and see if we can't see if it's checking to make sure it's not above it. Um, doesn't look like we have anything like that. Again, we could backtrace to see where some of that's coming from, but um, it may not ever come up. It just depends on how this one's written. Um, so we're done with team two. Team one, let's go ahead and do team two. Um, this one's gonna be somewhat similar in some areas, but we're gonna have to change some things. So we wanna definitely change our flag here to plus one or have a plus one offset. So this way we're actually reading this flag. And then the other thing we're gonna wanna do is change this all together. And we're gonna wanna zero XMM one yeah, we don't actually need to move it. Um, so yeah, what we can do, and even here, what we could actually do um, to make sure it comes up to zero is, you know, this will have it be a negative number, so it should work out with our check. Um, I don't know, 32-bit we moved, yeah, let's, let's see if something a little different here will work. Um, Instead of that, let's go and move SS. Since we know XMM0 is our decrease value, let's go ahead and move RBX plus 8. So this way it's going to decrease XMM1, um, the current health value, by the current health value. And this will make sure that we're going to wind up at 0 the first time this runs. Um, so here we do want to make sure we go and jump to O code we didn't, XMM1 would not get set right. Um, this one's gonna be basically the same, the only difference is we're gonna have an offset of um, plus four, because we're D words, and thus we only need to go plus four to get to that. So this should be basically it for this function. Um, the only thing would be to double check our AOB here. AOB is looking good. Um, let's look this over one more time. And I'm just kind of, you know, this is just part of the process sometimes. Um, it definitely takes longer to look it over like this when you're first starting. 
but I'm just looking for any kind of common mistakes that I tend to make and it's I only know these because I you know I made them in the past and had to take you know a long time figuring out what mistake I was making and, and that kind of thing um, so I think we're looking pretty good now time to go and test it and sometimes it's just you know test it out and see what happens um, and one of the videos coming up I'm wanting to actually show how to debug not only the game's code, but really we're going to should start by showing how to debug your own code. Um, and I want to do that both in Lua and uh, in the auto assembler in the memory view window here. But um, we'll worry about that later. So step nine. So then here, let's go ahead and start grabbing some of our symbols here and start placing these in. So this one is a pointer. Um, so we want it with a plus eight. And we're going to say team one health. And just control copy, control paste, or control C and control V. Go ahead and set both of these to the right type. I forgot to do that in the 32-bit tutorial. Didn't really do anything with it, so it didn't necessarily matter, but for clarity. Um, and then here we're gonna, like I said, we're gonna want that plus A. And then let's go ahead and add that unknown. We'll just call it other. And then for that one, we're going to want plus one zero. And then in theory, that one shouldn't really, it should just always be zero there. Um, I think, yeah, it'll actually end up just being question marks. So. <coughs> and then that's not a terrible idea getting a habit of just, you know, control save control S a lot. Um, I know I tend to do that a fair amount. So here our float is just going to be, oh, I'm doing that wrong. Our float is just going to be an actual address. So we don't want to make it a pointer. Um, this is going to be team one damage multiplier. Go ahead and set that to the right type. And plus four will get us to our team two damage multiplier. And now the last one to set is going to be that flag. So this we want to bite. So we got our address in there. This is going to be team one flag. And here what we're going to want to do is go ahead and right click and then come on up here to um, set slash change drop down selection options. Um, this is fairly simple. Um, I haven't set the deal to hex yet. I always like to set it to hex. So we need to make sure we actually it will look the same as our the value we would see. Um, so we'll need a double zero for zero. I'm going to go disabled. And then zero one. And we can even kind of show this. Um, if we just did one this wouldn't come up at all. since it's their default. Okay, damage multiplier. Um, and then we'll want to, we don't really want any other values to be input. We want it to just always be one of these. So we, you know, we'll disable manual user input. Um, 
we'll only show the description part and then we'll make it look like the display um, so before we actually start doing too much with that let's go ahead and I like to stick so this damage multiplier so we can kind of see it's connected to this in some way at least um, if we go ahead and enable this we can start seeing some of our values here um, set it to hex. So we set that to hex, we can go ahead and see what I was talking about here, how and you saw there when it wasn't hex, it does pick that up right, but when we're hex, we're not. Um, it's up to you however you actually do that. If you don't want it to be a hex, you don't need to. Um, I just like that. It's a, it's a flag, so to me it should just be hex. Let's go ahead and copy that. We can get rid of that for a second. Do plus one. So that'll be team two health or team two flag, sorry. And then the only thing we really want to change here is what that option one is. That's gonna be one hit kill. Enter doesn't work. Um, so that should be it for that. Um, we can kind of start checking stuff. Yeah, so we can see our multiplier is working here because we were working within the range of whole numbers, and right now we've got a pretty good little decimal points going here or places. Um, and our flag or our health, close that. Um, our pointer has updated. We set that one, we can see now it's set to that one, and again, we're obviously using our uh, multiplier. So this one, yeah, it seems like it was just decreasing by one before, whenever it was team two. We're decreasing by about five. We can go ahead and play with this a little bit and say set that to ten now. And then, yeah, we can see we're clearly going down by 10. Um, so at this point, let's go ahead and run it. And see, or restart game and autoplay and see if this gets us past it. So yeah, we passed the level with this. I guess with this one, all we got to do is outlive these two guys. Um, let's go ahead and restart game and just see if we get a similar behavior if we set both of these flags to option one and you can do this um, it does work because I, I'm not actually sure how it works underneath but it seems to just work out fine so this way it sets both these to one um, so if we auto play yeah we can see we've got infinite health and then they just died instantly again we could restart and see how you know really explicitly check that and make sure it works but um that's pretty much it for step nine. I don't really think there's anything else to go over. Um, so yeah, we added that damage multiplier. I'll go ahead and set this up here just for a second in case somebody needs to look at it a little longer. Um, it did get a little long. So we've got that set up and you know again we could keep going ahead and subbing down uh, more options um, I can't really come up with any off the top of my head right at this point but again you could set it up to use different multipliers at some point if you wanted to or you know just keep the value above a certain you know let it decrease normally until it gets to a certain level that you can kind of see here with this code we you'd want to use that um, it's, it's a compare ISS but nothing too serious here um that's pretty much it